Hello and welcome back to Florida Foodie. I'm Lisa Bell. And I'm Candice Campos. You know, when you think of pizza, you think maybe New York, maybe a little New Jersey. You know, they, those ideas come to mind. <laughs> Not so much Florida, though. No, no. I was thinking maybe Chicago, even. That, too. Mm-hmm. Well, today's guest is a lifelong resident of the Sunshine State, but he spent several summers on the Jersey Shore slinging slices on the boardwalk and now he is still selling pizzas but he's doing it in orlando having just opened a second location of his popular restaurant pizza bruno we are so happy to be joined today by bruno zacchini thank you so much oh you're welcome bruno uh, bruno zacchini yeah you got, like it, got it right you got she's it married right. to an italian you got so. it right yeah there and you go. did the hands too yeah. so yes. you know that's important part of a conversating in Italian, you know? Yeah. Even if you're not speaking Italian, you got to do the hands. Yeah, you got to do the hands. I can't help it. My, my wife comments on it all the time. She's like, you and your sister, the hands. The hands. All Just the time. On yeah, Sit on yeah, your hands, right? Hard, so. But yeah, no, glad to be here. Well, thank you for joining us. You were born and raised in Sarasota. Correct. Okay. Correct. So for the record, yes, I was born in Sarasota, Florida, mm-hmm. um, to a family that was in the Ringling Brothers Circus. That's why I'm in Sarasota, Italian, American uh performing oh. family human cannonball my uh grandfather's side this is on my dad's side so human cannibal they invented that act on my dad's side and my grandmother on that side their family was uh, equestrians so horseback riders acrobats clowns the whole whole bit and uh new jersey plays in because when i was born my family at that time they were no longer in the circus they got into the carny realm and being carnival mm-hmm. ride operators at the time for about five, six years prior to me being born, they had businesses in Seaside Heights, New Jersey. And so that began my Jersey shore life, I guess, more or less. It's a longer <laughs> story than that, nice. but that is, that is how New Jersey came into my life. So, yes. um, but yeah, that's, that's what an yeah. interesting family history. Yeah. And, and so where does the pizza like start? Where's your mm-hmm. love of pizza? I did not like pizza. You did not. No, my How grandmother never co- cooked pizza. I, I have a northern Italian family. They're all from northern Italy. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't really eat pizza so much growing up. And in Sarasota, Florida, there's no, like, pizzerias. I mean, my, <laughs> my pizzeria of choice was Hungry Howie's, okay? okay? And uh, let's not – and Sabaro's in the Golfgate Square Mall. Or Golfgate Mall. Yeah. I mean, if you're from Those Sarasota, <laughs> you remember. I know, they don't, but – so, but that's what I had growing up. And so pizza, I'll be honest, like I just didn't like pizza. I worked in, my first job was at my um, my um, cousin, my cousin Maya, my first cousin. She married this guy, Bill. His dad owned all these restaurants and I was like 13. I've been going up there for a couple summers, just like summer vacay. And I was like 12 the year before and I just sat around watching MTV and like Beavis and Butthead. And, and the following year they're like, <laughs> all right, you have to go to work. So 13, they put me to work. At the steakhouse, when I say steakhouse, it's just like cheesesteaks, fresh cut fries, and pizza. Put me on the pizza counters, uh, selling slices, sodas, you know, that's it. So that's where pizza started for me, and, you know, that was it. Um, But that's what started me in the restaurant world. Uh So I did that every – I loved it. Like, I was like, this is so much fun. I had a great time, like, worked a million hours, like, five bucks an hour. Didn't care. Got half my paycheck and quarters for the arcade. (laughs) But I went back every summer and kept cooking, cooking, cooking. That's how I got here to Orlando. I decided to go to culinary school when I was like 19 or 20. I went to Valencia. So that's how I ended up in Orlando. Okay. Um, and I wasn't going to stay. But, you know, come here, you get, you know, girlfriend, life, jobs, right. whatever. Orlando has a way of just like sucking you. Yeah. yeah. You try to leave yeah. and you just can't. Right. So <laughs> I was one of those. I didn't leave. And Lord knows I tried more than a few times. But um, pizza was always like an afterthought for me, especially in the restaurant world, because it was something I could do, but it was like, especially fine dining or whatever, it was like an afterthought. Like, hey, you know how to make pizza? Go deal with that. Like, mm-hmm. And it wasn't really like a focal point of anything. So I looked at it like that, and I didn't like doing it. I'll be honest. Like, I didn't have any joy of doing it or whatever. Um, and that was for like a number of years up until um, 2013, I think. Uh, I was hired to, as a chef consultant to open a place in New Smyrna Beach called Third Wave Cafe. Still there. It's like a, if you go to New Smyrna, you know it's uh, P- uh, Peninsula and Flagler, mm-hmm. so right over the North Causeway. But uh, the owners there were like, "Hey, we want to do crepes in the morning and wood fired pizza at night." I'm like, "Okay." They were my friend's parents, and she called me. She's like, "You got to help them. They have no idea what they're doing. They're, reti- <laughs> they're retiring and opening a restaurant." Like she's like, I don't know. 
they just yeah. they just help them. Yeah. And um, after my first question was like, do you guys want new jobs? Because this is like a whole new job. You just retired, right? right? They're like, oh, it'll be great. And it's a big job. Big job. And, yes. you know, so <laughs> I don't think they believed me at the start, but now they know. But um, I was there and uh, I was living in College Park at the time. So I was commuting from College Park where I lived on Formosa to uh, New Smyrna. It's quite a drive. Every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two hours of driving every day and on top of 10, 12 hour days. But there I was like, okay, cool. I have this wood fired oven. I'm going to really dive in and try to make some good pizza here because that's what they gave me to work with. I mean, you like, unleash your creativity. I mean, it yeah, gave you that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. I took it seriously. I was like, okay, you're going to make some good pizza, and that's the focus. Because originally, that's what all they wanted to do. But as, uh, you know, New Smyrna grew, and, mm -hmm. the, the, the you know, the place got, like, uh, well-known and better known. They wanted to expand the menu and, and we did over time, but the pizza was the, like, I really enjoyed it. And, um, during that time out there, I was always like, man, I would love to a not drive two hours a day, you know, to do this. I'd like to do this back, back in Orlando. So, um, you know, in, I think it was like 2015, I was kind of like looking for places and had something lined up. It fell through and, you know, I was like, I kind of gave up, but I was doing pop-ups here and there over like over the summer. I had to take care of my dad. He was in the hospital and uh, it was too much for me to work and do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had one day where I like didn't have to be there in Sarasota. So I was doing a pop-up on Wednesdays at Red Light, Red Light, Red Light. Mm -hmm. um, did that for like a couple weeks, month. And then I went back to work at Third Wave. And in that time frame, it never left my mind of like, okay, I want to do a restaurant in Orlando somewhere whatever that looks like. My first choice was Mills 50. That's where it always was. Uh, I had like floor drawings from an actual space. We almost did, but at the time it was just like too much money. Like I right. couldn't support it doing it. I had no investors and anything like that. So fast forward, uh, I think it was like February of 2016. And I saw an ad on Craigslist for what is now Curry Ford Pizza Bruno. Okay. And they're like, oh, second gen Italian restaurant. And, um, you know, it's for lease. And usually in... Um, restaurant world, you don't really see second gen restaurants come up without like already being, you know, given to people that are in the business already that have established records. Cause like usually that's who gets first dips. Mm -hmm. Like you rarely see a second gen just like on Craigslist, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's insane. Uh, sometimes you do, but like, so it was super insane. I was like, this must be a scam. Call the guy. I didn't realize that. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> Turned yeah. out it wasn't a scam. It was actual reality. And I was like, wow, this is cool. Um, and I knew the place. It was Sopranos forever. Yeah. Curry Ford and Conway. And it was like way out of my like, I don't know who lives over here or what the neighborhood's like. Because I lived in Winter Park and College Park mm -hmm. and spent most of my time Winter Park, College Park, Mills 50. So I was very familiar with that. Um, but we opened, uh, I opened Curry Ford. Well, actually, so rewind. So they gave me the lease, which was shocking. That That's where we should really get back to. Um, <clears throat> he gave me the lease. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I have a restaurant lease. What do I do? I had a very little amount of money, like a scary small amount, which I flipped <laughs> back. I was like, "What was I thinking?" What? You know, I uh, financed everything to to the you know to the hilt, and it just you know it took some crazy uh, interest rates to get some things done. But you know, I opened, and I had no intentions of other than like making pizza how I wanted. So because in at Third Wave New Smyrna, it was like very tourist driven, mm -hmm. and which was cool. Like there was like regulars, but. It just wasn't like cooking how I wanted to cook. Like everybody right. wanted fish tacos, right? Mm -hmm. Like black and fish tacos, the mm -hmm. same thing all the time, which which was fine. It's that's what they do out there, and that's cool. But so yeah, here, yeah, fish taco guy. Well, yeah, I mean, I could, yeah, we could do them. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. But it wasn't like what I wanted to do. I was like, hey, I want to make really good pizza and do it in an environment that like I want to play good music, have fun, great pizza, whatever comes of it. And it started off like that, and it still is that. But it went from like, okay, this seems small to like kind of blew up right right so why do you think it blew weird. up huh i don't know i mean good pizza people i do have to say when you first came to pizza bruno college or curry ford sorry mix them up all the time uh pizza wasn't that good so i will tell you that i think it's gotten a lot better yes. yeah. i think it sucked at the beginning not yeah I'm, yeah just being totally honest like i think it was okay i don't think it was really great mm -hmm. but you know for what it was mm -hmm. at the time like i said no one I mean, aside from like Prado at the time, that was the only place like doing pizza. Yeah. No one else. Well, it also seems like during that time you mentioned your first choice was Mills, but that also area also kind of redeveloped into the Hourglass District, it seems. Yeah. 
You don't? You're disagreeing with me. So <laughs> Curry Ford West is my main street. Okay. That's where we are. Curry yeah. Ford West. Hourglass District is an after the fact. Curry Ford West is the main street. Hourglass is something else. Okay. And that's on that corner because it's county. It's not yes. actually in the district. It's a whole thing. But um, but I feel like more you're people welcome, are. You're welcome, Hourglass District you. is all I'm saying. <laughs> you're welcome. I feel like more people it's who true. don't live there are going to that area yeah. for the bars and restaurants scene. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I like I was explaining uh uh, earlier, so I moved over there uh, in 2020, uh, and I, it's a great neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It's uh, super convenient. There's a lot of good stuff around there. Um, it's enjo- it's a nice place to be. You know, I want to yeah. see more. I think it could develop a lot more. There's spaces that I think are not being used uh, well. I feel like, um, and I know the city has like a master plan for the whole Curry Ford West corridor. They mm-hmm. have a whole master plan. They want to see more development uh, closer to the street, make it kind of more neighborhoody and almost i think they want to slow curry ford down which is fine because it gets a little dicey at times but um yeah it's great and there's you know um a lot of good stuff there there was a lot of good stuff there even before i showed up and i just kind of i guess you know catalyst people be like oh it's a great idea and i was like they just gave me a lease i don't know you know (laughs) that wasn't the plan on craigslist yeah it wasn't the plan guys you know so um and that's that's you know how it came about, but that so, makes that makes a great story when it it's really not co- when well, you know when it's yeah. not planned when yeah. you think you want this and then all of this amazing stuff and happens. Yeah. People who have big dreams of opening their own restaurant. Well, I have learned by doing this podcast over the years, securing a lease is actually a thing. I mean, yeah. we were talking to the people from Jeff's Bagel Run, mm-hmm. and they were oh, turned yeah. down by yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now, you know, their location has exploded. They've Watch opened up. Yeah, yeah, they've opened up another yeah. location. So I had no idea that it was that hard to actually get someone to allow you to pay them to be there. Yes. Well, there's a lot to that because restaurant business is probably the hardest business you could ever be in. I'll it's you know it's like cliche to say that but it's totally true Mm -hmm. restaurant business extremely hard to do and do well well enough to pay rent Mm -hmm. right because if you have no track record you have nothing proven at all period Mm -hmm. um you know and then you just become a headache for the landlord well it's like how long are you gonna last is this you know i'm assigned (laughs) a five-year lease to this person they're gone in six months like to them it's like a wasted effort so yeah that is, yes, it's extremely hard to break. And now even more so yeah. because there's so many operators out there and it's successful ones that they get the first dips. Like I, my inbox explodes with, hey, there's a spot. You want to leave now? Right. You know, like, <laughs> you know yeah. that sounds great yeah. and all. You know, they'll paint you the, room, the picture, but, you know, yeah. then you get down to it. But, yeah, I, you know, I'll see a lot come by me. And, you know, even bigger operators, they get even better and, you know, the, the first dibs, so to speak. Yeah. So. so you got first, I mean, you got first dibs, Curry Ford, yeah. and now you're getting... How did that come about? Yeah. You said there was a story behind your second location. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'd actively been looking for a location too. We had a brief uh, outlet uh, downtown when it was OCB at the brewery down there. Downtown was just a weird market. It didn't really work for us. Um, we I figured out that like we excel in a kind of a different neighborhood uh, yeah. or environment. But... Uh, yeah, I was actively looking for a location for before COVID, like constantly. You know, we we had a few, and it's just a lot of. Was a it lot just of, business was just doing really well, and you just wanted to kind of ride well, that way? I mean, way, you can only or? fit so many people in one place, and True. you know, it's it's you know to the point where it's like, man, we could really do this somewhere mm-hmm. else and it do well because obviously the model is like proven itself. Mm-hmm. So um, I looked for a long time. And went through a lot of negotiations with different, um, some different places, a few in Winter Park, uh, one in Maitland, uh, where else was another one? I don't know. I forget. But there was a few and they got pretty far along. But, you know, business is hard, you know, and, you know, you have to make choices that while it might look like a great, you know, like this is like, wow, that's huge. But then the bottom line doesn't work out, you know, right. as a business owner, it's weird to say, you know, still yeah. like I am, I'm not, I've never done a business class. I don't have yeah. a degree. I barely graduated high school. I'll be totally honest, you know, and I'm terrible at math, like really bad, but I've had to learn a lot to own and operate, um, this business. Mm-hmm. It's been painful, very painful <laughs> at times. Um, yeah. some pricey life lessons. Yeah. Financial insecurity <laughs> is a real word when it comes to business ownership mm-hmm. and it's terrifying, you know, but, um, you learn your lessons, you mm-hmm. make the best choice you can. And a lot of times, especially when it comes to leases, 
what works. You know, you have to set numbers that work for you. And they can say, well, this location is great, but, you know, if this part of my budget is destroyed because, right. you know, just the lease amount is that much of the budget, not even talking about the cost to build it. I mean, some of the costs, mm-hmm. I mean, can get real high, mm-hmm. you know. I don't, you know, want to spend a million dollars on a build out and then right. like pay a, you know, 15% lease rate. Like, no. Like, yes. I yeah. will make any money. I mean, yeah. if you have money to burn, go for it. But it's, you know, it's tough. So College Park actually came about. Uh, I received a random email from actually Rob, the owner of Tin Taco, like, hey, are these locations, would you be interested? And so we started talking and, you know, College Park is like notoriously not known well, it's known for a lot of pizza shops, right? Like a lot yes. of pizza, a lot of pizza yes. in Italian, yes. absolutely. Um, but restaurants in general, like, don't look at College Park as like, oh, this is like where I'm going to open and do this thing. Because I think, you know, being a resident, I was a resident there for a while. You know, the demographics have changed. Um, a lot of people moving to College Park, a lot of change. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that are like, hey, I'd really like to eat really great food in College Park instead of going to Winter Park. Right. I mean, I know when I lived in College Park on that I would go to Winter Park to eat or Mills 50. I wouldn't really go to College Park, like, at all. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, at first I was like, well, you know, it's worth to think about. And then, mm-hmm. you know, the deal just worked out. You know, the rent worked. You know, the space worked. Yeah. All that. So you are taking over for where the Tin and Taco used to be. Yeah. On, on Edgewater, Edgewater Drive. Yeah. So does the former Tin and Taco owner own that space? Cause no, no, no. no. So okay. I, we, well, I, yeah. I bought the assets and when, then we um, uh-huh. got, you know, we took over the lease, just simple. And that's, that's not the only venture though, that you plan yeah. to open in college park. No, actually. So yeah, we're doing a donut shop right down the street. <laughs> sure. Well, it just works I out, you know, that. you know, well, yeah. I'm, I happen to be there and we're building out the college park store, which is now open, but, uh, graffiti junction actually, um, got rid of, I guess, this extra seating space, but it used to be a restaurant. Okay. Yeah, I guess in its history, it was a few restaurants in the past. So um, they put, put they had this wall, they, you know, they knocked it down, pushed it over, and then they put a yeah. wall back up and they got rid of that space and they asked the landlord. Like a like, hole in the wall. Yeah, a and I was like, donut hole in the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah donut yeah, yeah, hole in the wall. You know, I That's believe good. it already has. Yeah, a name I know it already it has. Does, a name. does, it does. It's pretty good though. <laughs> you didn't consult with us. <laughs> Come right? on. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Next <laughs> yeah. time I'll call. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was a good deal. What is the official name of your new donut shop? It's gonna be Dizzy Donuts. Dizzy Cute. Donuts. And when do you hope to open Dizzy Donuts? Uh, we had a little hiccup in the uh, construction, but okay. hopefully January, February next year. That's okay. We were hoping December, but. And pushbacks. in my research, my donut research, yes. which has been very extensive, yeah. um, you are only offering a specific type of donut. Correct. Okay. Tell us about that and why you chose that type of donut. All right. Hot cake donuts only. Yes. So, yes. so, <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't really like, like the brioche risen donuts. I just don't like, yeah. I, I, my wife loves them. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. I she don't go get them somewhere else. Well, she likes cake donuts though. So. Yeah. Here's the reason why. So, okay, so back to New Jersey. So my wife, uh, Leela, she is from Jersey. My ex-wife's from Jersey, too. It's a long story. But anyways, but, but <laughs> we're all good. Podcast. All good. But um, yeah. <laughs> it's another podcast. But yeah, no, so she's um, from Jersey as well. Um, but so since we've been together, she takes me to where she would summer, and our family lives outside, which is Ocean, Ocean City. I'd never been because... When I was there, I was always working at Seaside, which if you've ever been to Seaside, it, that's where they film Jersey Shore. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like insane, right? It's total club, bars, yeah. craziness. Situation. Um, there's some really good food, yeah. really great food, but it's nuts, right? Um, so she's like, oh, you know, we go to Ocean City. And I was like, what is this? Ocean City is like totally opposite. It's a dry, dry town, um, very chill, beautiful, really well maintained. Um, but they have some really good food there too. Um, so they have, uh, a couple places that do uh, these hot cake donuts. So originally, one of the first places she brought me to was Frog Hollow, which is not on the boardwalk. It's like in this in the backwoods. You mm-hmm. wouldn't even know it's there. It's like this little hut, like a little house. Looks like a little hobbit house, but they do hot cake donuts. They're delicious. But a couple places on the boardwalk, mainly Browns, which has been there for 50 years or something. But, you know, it's a couple children jockeying, you know, donut robots. Cinnamon sugar, plain, honey, powdered sugar, chocolate, vanilla iced. That's it. Wow. And line down the boardwalk Whoa. all day. Yeah. Every day. 
all summer. Now, have that's you made feeling? donuts before? Do you have a history of making no. donuts? No. No. Okay. But, you know, donut robot. <laughs> So he wasn't yeah. a big fan of pizza either. And now look at him. Yeah. So yeah, you know. So it's 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 more of like I want things that I can't get here, and that's why I do okay. it. That's brilliant. I like that. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. pretty simple. Yeah. So is this going to be like a breakfast type place, or yeah. open all day, like, like a you know, yeah, like dinner. I need a donut at two a.m. No. type thing? Like... No, we're not going to be open until two. Okay. <laughs> not in College Park, anyways. Yeah, I can't but do no, that. we're going to do uh, hot cake donuts and uh, Japanese fried chicken sandwiches, chicken uh, karage wow. chicken, yeah. Which yes. it's all right. So I the so only reason I am not be? trying to do the. <laughs> I'm not trying to compete with the chicken battle that's happening yeah, in yes. you know Orlando at all. <laughs> it was a way to ex extend the hours, you know, uh -huh. and then potentially offer, you know, something for lunch. Really, okay. That was it. And okay. I also wanted like. Maybe a, a fried chicken sandwich. Lisa's wondering. Well, well, you, I, yes, wondering. these are all personal questions I'm asking. <laughs> no. Will you have cocktails at Dizzy Donuts? No. no. Okay. No beer, wine, just just coffee, <laughs> soft drinks. Nice. You know, okay. that's it. It's, like you know, it. breakfast, lunch. Mm -hmm. um, we might push our hours later in the afternoon. We'll just have to see how it works yeah. out okay. because yeah. I, I don't see it really going past five, six o'clock. I mean, and you and you talked a lot about how there's there's a bunch of pizza places around town. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who might be watching or listening and say, I, I have a pretty good pizza place, so why would I need to try Pizza Bruno? Yeah. Um, what sets your pizza yeah. apart? Well, I mean, I I like it. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. so, okay, so mind you, both locations do different styles of pizza. So okay. if you haven't been to Curry Ford before, we do what's called new Neapolitan style pizza. So Neapolitan pizza, mm -hmm. it's not as thin as you're, you're doing the hand motion. That's a thin crust. Thin. No. So Neapolitan pizza, yes, while it is thin, the crust is a little bit bigger. True Neapolitan is made with double zero flour, but it's really floppy and soft. Mm -hmm. It's cooked in a wood fired oven in about a minute and a half, uh, about you know 900 to 1000 degrees is where you want to cook it. Um, we don't do true Neapolitan. We don't at all. Like we do Neapolitan techniques. That's why we call it new Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. So we use high temperatures in a wood fired oven. We use uh, Pavese, which is from Modena, Italy across from the Ferrari shop. That's why they're all Ferrari red. Um, so it's cooked in this environment. Floor temperature is about 700 to 750. Ceiling is about 1,000. But what we do with our dough is we don't use double O flour, which is a really fine flour. It doesn't have a lot of protein, so it's very soft. Most Americans do not like Neapolitan pizza, right. straight up. Like, I don't really like it either, okay? I've done it. It's fine. It's good. I just don't like it because it's a bit floppy and... Uh, it just doesn't have, I don't know, it just doesn't have a lot of um, character. So uh, we've changed our recipe, I'm not even kidding, like 25 to 30 times <laughs> since we started. So Wait, that's I went, what he was saying. He's improved. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we originally did closer to a Neapolitan style. We we're using double little flour. Now we're very far away from it. So um, ours is almost akin to a wood fired New York style pizza. Okay. Ish. Okay. Ish. Yeah. And our big thing is we do natural leavening. So we use a sourdough starter, 100% in that dough yeah so the benefits are flavor digestibility so when you eat like pizza from pizza bruno one natural fermentation has been the only fermentation there's no added yeast it's not accelerated in any manner it's just what the natural yeasts are producing so yeah. they're i never the asked that but yeah. Yeah. there's so a lot the, of science <clears throat> behind the pizza yeah. so they're yeah. eating the sugars dissolving the gluten so when you eat it it's a lot lighter so you can house like a whole pizza and you're like wow don't feel like crap. Sweet. So um, that's a big one. <laughs> that is good that's a big one. Yeah. They're yeah. 12 inch. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. We're cooking at those high temps, uh, a little longer, a little crispier. It will have charring if you do not like charred mm. char or like it looks like a leopard leopard spots. Don't don't come in. Okay. You burnt my pizza. No, I didn't. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We never did. <laughs> you know, I'll say when we're, we're burning because we have a double check every time. We have a, a person on the expediter window who checks every single pizza. So if it comes out, yes, at times there's been mistakes made. I'll admit that. But for the most part, we like to have that double check to make sure yeah. every single pizza mm -hmm. passes what we consider, a, you know, a check. Like, hey, is this worthy of going out? You know? Is it undercooked? Because I, I hate undercooked pizza. Like, I'll be like, what is this? this well, we, can't serve, yeah. we can't serve raw pizza. You can't serve undercooked stuff. We have a certain threshold of, like, where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So that's PB1. And also, you know, our ingredients, we use really great ingredients, you know, California tomatoes, olive oil, 
um, grate all of our cheeses, all that stuff. So it's like a lot of quality. Um, everything, everything's quality as best we can. We make everything in house too. So there's that. So if you haven't been there, I suggest trying that. Mm -hmm. um, now PB2 College Park is a little different. Um, so what I'm deeming is South Jersey style, which is just a riff on kind of what they do on the boardwalk. So there's a place called Manco Manco on Ocean City Boardwalk. If you've ever been, my wife took me for the first time. I was like, wow, this is really good. Um, and they do their style of pizza. I don't do, um, I don't add a particular ingredient that they add that makes it not vegan. Um, so our dough is vegan, both of your doughs are vegan, but, um, you know, it's, it's thinner crust. It's not New York style. Mm -hmm. New York style is a heavier, denser crust. Mm -hmm. Like, um, more defined, I guess you could say, and more like kind of classic, like you see like, um, like go to Joe's and Carmine street. That's a New York slice. That's yeah. like the benchmark if you ever mm -hmm. go to New York. Um, but ours is not like that. Uh, New York style is cooked about 500 degrees, um, high gluten flour sauce on the bottom, mozzarella on top. So right. what we do, <clears throat> we do, um, cheese on the bottom, sauce on top. We're cooking at about 650, so it's a little higher, so a little different uh, than most. So crispy, you know, thinner. Um, not so much a, like, defined crust, as you would say. Like, we press it all out, and it just kind of, like, forms natural place. So it's, like, kind of a weird cross, cross between the two. And then... Both sound delicious. Yeah. yeah. And then that dough, we use a bit of natural starter. We use a poolish, and we use yeast. So there's three leavening agents all doing different things. Wow. And what's the benefit of putting the cheese first? So for me, it's a preference. I actually like light sauce on my pizza. Same. Okay. If I'm putting cheese, I like light sauce, but I really love a good tomato pie. So we'll we'll oh, get to that. So, um, <laughs> to me, it's a it's a flavoring thing. I like the flavor yeah. that it comes out of that. Um, I've always just really enjoyed that. We were we've done that forever at PB One with a couple of our pies. Like the K Bar pizzas always had the sauce world. Mm -hmm. That's been day one. But it's just a technique that you see from particularly um, Trenton style pies, which now mi they migrated to the Jersey Shore and that's how you get South Jersey pizza, but there's always a sauce swirl. That's and so what are some of your more popular pizzas? You mentioned a tomato pizza. Yeah, no one ha no one has really gotten into it yet, but like people that I've had come in and got the tomato pie, like a slice and they're like, sorry, you're gonna have to please that. <laughs> um, Holy tomato, this is delicious. So that's yeah. one of my favorites at the new shop and it's literally, Sauce, olive oil, Sicilian oregano, and sea salt. Oh. That's it. Wow. And you, you can it... have it. I prefer to have it in slice form. And I mean, so there's slice no form. cheese? No cheese whatsoever. Sounds like a heartburn. And I didn't hear so, tomato in not. that. Yeah. Tomato. It's good tomatoes. Okay. Tomato. Sorry. Or Sicilian oregano, olive oil, sea salt. Yum. That's it. And, I and where can I find that? Which that's location? College Park. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I prefer that in slice form. And I mean, that slice form is like yeah. have it for lunch. So you. A slice pie is traditionally cooked, mm -hmm. but sat and then cut and then reheated, so it gets a little extra crispy. Oh. So a slice pie is what you want to do with that. Have that with a little little coke, a little fizzy coke. Yeah. Woo! That's good. Um, <laughs> but also one of my other favorite pies from Pizza Bruno One is a marinara, which is just tomatoes, garlic, capers, oregano, olive oil, but add anchovies. Okay, really good. that's a super classic. That's like Neapolitan pizza. Mm -hmm. That's like yeah. a, well, the, Bruno, one of the first pizzas. What's the one thing you'll never put on a pizza? Um, I can't say never, but I don't like putting chicken on pizza. No chicken. Okay. Yeah. You didn't say pineapple. Of, I know. I was no. waiting for pineapple. No, I love pineapple. I had pineapple on pizza the other day. It's really? Great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's delicious. Now, chicken, then you come like chicken pizza place. Like, we've done it, and I just, I, mean, I don't you know. Are, you are it's like you cross a threshold, door. and then you're like that, like... <laughs> place i don't know man what is the oddest or most exotic thing that you've put on a pizza um i don't know i don't think odd or like exotic i mean you can go as weird as you want as long as it tastes good i feel like a lot of americans don't love anchovies yeah i love them they're great but you know most people are like oh like our salad dressing emperor salad dressing which is you know caesar emperor same stuff right uh -huh, um, cute. but people are like wow it tastes so good and like a ton of anchovies in it this, it's the kid. True. It's just yeah. umami. It's like yeah. a lot of flavor. Yeah. Um, fermentation gives you all that flavor. But um, yeah, anchovies are always divisive. But I say, you know, give it a shot on certain items. They make a really world of difference. But yeah. exotic ingredients. I mean, you can put like the wagyu and all that stuff, truffles, and like I, me personally, being mm -hmm. from the chef world, I wouldn't buy that. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm, I told, I put it on my story the other day. I was like, don't invite me to your pizza cook off competition or anything. So I'm just going to give you a tomato pizza and that's it. Yeah. And leave. But that's your well, I cannot thing. wait to try that. <laughs> that's it, man. Now, at Pizza Bruno, too, since it's right down the street, will you be at least offering the Dizzy Donuts for dessert? No. No. Okay. We have a soft serve machine there. So, okay. You got to walk, you gotta walk, you gotta walk, you gotta walk the pizza. Well, I don't think we're, we're not, I don't think we're gonna offer like the donut shop, probably won't be open dinner hours. Yeah, so, yeah, so you just have to get ice cream. And can you just elaborate yeah, a bit more time. on the chicken sandwich that will be available there? Oh, yeah, so Karagi chicken. <laughs> so, 100%, I definitely want to do this only because of Tori Tori. They have this really great Karagi chicken just uh, appetizer. Right yeah, 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 Sunny. So, they have. Just an appetizer, and it's really delicious. So I was oh, like, man, I really want yeah. to do sandwiches like this. So that was that, really. Awesome. That was the inspirato behind it. I just, love it. You know, something I'd like to <laughs> eat I mean, more that, of in different forms. And that's how it seems like your whole culinary you know, career has just been you getting interested in something, mm-hmm. putting your mind to it, and Well, and yeah. I mean, I grew up, like I said, so kind of also, too, goes back to what I grew up with was Italian uh, family. So... But they were always cooking, and mm-hmm. the food that I ate as an Italian kid from Sarasota, Florida, with a circus family, was very different than what you ate as someone that lived in New York, New Jersey. It was a very different style, right. so it was a lot lighter, uh, a lot simpler. It wasn't a lot of heavy red sauce or stuff like that that most people equate to Italian food. So my experience with Italian food has gotten me to different places, right. even though I didn't like being like, oh, I'm going to cook Italian food mm-hmm. professionally. I was like, nah, I'm going to do something cooler than that. And yeah. then you finally like give up and you embrace it. You're like, oh, okay. You know, I most, guess it's yes. my blood. I guess I know what this should taste like. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Or understand it a little bit more. I don't know. But that's yeah. kind of where it's at. Now. What has the change been like for you personally, going from one restaurant to now two and pretty soon three and oh. juggling all that plus a family? Um, well, it's, you know, it's always challenges. I, uh, for better or worse, like working yeah. in a restaurant. Like, I like being a line cook. Like, I just was like, man, I was there like 55, 60 hours last week just cooking because mm-hmm. we had someone, long-term employee, needed time off. And I was like, yeah. whatever, I'll just cover shifts. Yeah. I need to anyway, so it was just something that needed to be done. I like it. My wife does not like it. Right. Uh, but she's also <laughs> the marketing PR person for me. So yeah. she's pretty wrapped up in this stuff. She's not really on site. But overall, like, juggling, it's just kind of like, Okay, how do you stay sane through all of the crazy stuff okay. that you have yeah. to deal with on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. Um, I've learned to not overreact anymore. Yeah. I've calmed a lot lately. Um, uh, people that knew me in the past, uh, somebody actually mentioned, like, wow, you're not like you used to be. And that there's a lot of factors to that. Um, you know, some stuff that I've had to look at personally and, you know, address personally and, you know, um, mental health stuff and everything like that that's important to talk about, especially in this business, you know? Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of stuff in the past that I would do that really was unhealthy. Mm-hmm. So now, over some years, yeah. it started actually when I opened PB1, I made it a choice in my life, and it was extremely hard, but it was something I had to do, and it got me to a point where now I can handle a lot of this. And it's only been given, like, I feel like I've only been given um, enough the, what I can handle for the time being, right? right, right. So, um, and that's fine. Like, yeah. you know, every challenge is always like, okay, I know I can handle this because yes. I've gone through all this other stuff. While sometimes it's like really a lot, mm-hmm. yeah. but I know I'm like, well, um, I wouldn't be given this if I couldn't handle it. So yeah. um, a lot of juggling is about taking care of yourself first and foremost. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I work out a lot. I go to the gym a lot. I spend a lot of time, you know, as much time as I can, you know, with my wife and kid. And I make priority out of that. Right. I understand that it's I'm okay. It's okay to leave the restaurant. <laughs> it will be fine. Yeah. So if you don't yeah. see me there, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like and I'm going to live my life too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And if something goes wrong, it maybe it doesn't have to be wrong. addressed immediately. You right. can do it tomorrow or whatever. Yeah. You, you know? know. I mean, yeah. there's certain si- situations like and it never. It's nothing yeah. is always going to be perfect. I yeah. had that mentality drilled into me over these years yeah. prior. You know, a lot a lot of years prior. Like I you know, believed everything had to be perfect. Every had yes. everything had to be just so. And if it wasn't, the world was going to collapse. And this was pretty recent too. This was like a couple years ago where I was still like this. Like I was not very nice to be around mm-hmm. um, professionally and personally too. So my wife says, but you know, <laughs> I've changed a lot, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Because yeah, you can, you know, as like I stated earlier, like being a business owner is 
not just being a chef, a cook or whatever. It's like, you have to be, um, understanding that people are people, right. they aren't you, they need coaching and help more Especially than they in a tough to industry as, yeah. as you know it's extremely brutal and it's not the one that i grew up in and the one i grew mm -hmm. up in was you know quite frankly terrible right, you know right. horrible cooking is hard restaurant work is hard um it shouldn't be made harder by you know your coworkers being you know physically verbally all the mm -hmm. abuse you could possibly right. get and that's just the day you know yeah. we, that's no longer the case and that's fine with me you know because it's a great industry and like I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I like I said, like I love cooking, like I don't mind like at all. It's part of why I do it. Um, but you know, it can also be, you know, rough yeah, and yeah. physically hard. So how you know, it physically hard is one thing, but it shouldn't be emotionally taxing or draining or you know, right. all that stuff. So um I, I you know, long story short is like uh I've had to learn how to change stuff personally in order to grow and you know be better at what I do and juggle mm -hmm. the family, the wife, the, the business, the business side of things, the restaurant side of things, the cooking side of things, like the PR the employees, side of things, the employees, yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, all, yes, yeah. it's all a big, um, you know, you're just kind of learning, you know, and not beating yourself up too much right. if you mm -hmm. make a mistake, right? Like and not to bring back the circus, but it is really a balancing act. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a balancing I mean, act. It's all it a balancing is, act. It's all a balancing know. act. And it's and it's, you know, making the best decisions you can at the time mm -hmm. with what you have learned. Because yeah. we're all kind of juggling and walking the tightrope yeah. in our daily oh, lives. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's like look, I was like, no one knows what's going on, man. Yeah. Everybody's just trying to do the best <laughs> they can, dude. Yeah. And and you know, and that's I hope we don't fall off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope you don't or fall off. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So and you know, now it's like I, I'm responsible for a lot of people with mm -hmm. being, you know, you know, being the name, face, brand. I have to make important decisions that affect a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that's that can be frustrating at times oh, because yeah. my decisions don't really line up sometimes with everybody's, mm -hmm. right. you know, you ideals. Can't, you can't make everyone happy. Yeah. yeah. But, right. you know, I try to make, you know, accommodations. So we recently decided to close our Curry Ford location two days a week. And we originally were going to leave College Park closed two days a week. But um, it's just kind of like a peace of mind thing. Yeah. Uh, we were struggling on those two days. Not necessarily struggling. We were getting sales and stuff like that. But was it worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, and we kept looking at the numbers and going, like, it's not really worth it. To, and I've been seeing a lot that. of restaurants kind of doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's hard. It was hard for me to say, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, because I had some, um, you know, staff members, upper managers were like, hey, this would be really great that we can focus on the five days and have yeah, those right. guaranteed two days yes. off. Because also staffing, like, we can't yeah. staff seven days a week with like really great people. Yes. And to do what we do at both, let's say both locations, it's mm -hmm. hard. Right. It's hard work. It's technical work. You have to have a lot of skills to be able to do it well. And if you don't have a couple of services mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with that, it's difficult, right. you know? So um, we made that choice. And it was weird at first because I was like, oh, man, it's Monday. And I'm like, I was scrambling. I was like, I got to go run the restaurant. And I'm like, wait, actually, I don't. Well, it's, I, don't. <laughs> actually, I was like, you know, I look at it. I'm like, we lost a little sales. But ultimately, I'm like, eh, you know, it worked yeah. out. And actually, it, it, it did better for us on our, our uh labor expense so so where can people find you instagram facebook all that fun stuff uh so instagram uh official pizza bruno um i think there's tiktok now same mm -hmm. same one all so right. if you're into the tiktoks we got that going on too that's a a vital part of being in the restaurant world mm -hmm. nowadays uh facebook sure if you're doing that still <laughs> um, but mainly check instagram that's where we um 100 post all of our up-to-date information also, if you go to the website, pizzabrunofl.com, uh, there's a newsletter. So if you want to really know what's going on, we do a, a monthly newsletter and awesome. it drops on the 29th, I think. And it usually has like all the dates for upcoming classes, collab dinners, et cetera. The ticket links usually drop the next day if we have a class that month. So awesome. all that. Bruno Zucchini, thank you so much for joining us on Florida Foodie. This was fascinating and so fun talking to you. And I can't wait to try that tomato pizza yeah. in College Park. This is me yeah. dreaming about yeah. it. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Thank you, you so Absolutely. much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Florida Foodie. We'd also like to thank our guest, Bruno Zucchini. You can find his business online at pizzabrunofl.com or you can search Pizza Bruno on Instagram and TikTok. Be sure to follow Lisa Bell online, search Lisa Bell News on Facebook and Instagram or Lisa Bell News 6 on Twitter. 
You can also find Candace Campos on social media. She's on Twitter. Just search at Candace New 6. And on Facebook, search Candace Campos New 6. Also, a big thank you to our technical producers, Derek Mosier and Ryan Haley, our post production audio engineer, Chris Flora, and our director, Rich Burns. I'm the show's producer, Thomas Mates. Please take the time to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you stream podcasts. And you can find videos of all of our podcasts on clickorlando.com and on YouTube. Just search for Florida Foodies.